<clears throat> All right, guys. So in this video today, we're going to talk about the pros and cons of filming and editing a wedding video by yourself. So a wedding film by yourself. So the pros and cons of filming and editing it all by yourself, guys. Let's go. I get a lot of emails and a lot of just like, you know, uh, spam emails talking about, oh, I'll edit your video. You know, our production company deals with editing other people's videos. Just send us your files and blah, 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 and we'll edit the video. Uh, for you just in case you're backed up and all that stuff. I'm not going to lie, you know, as of right now, I'm really backed up in weddings. As I'm making this video for you, I got like about five weddings I still have to do. And, um, you know, I'm, I'm doing them as quick as I can. And plus, I still have time left in the contract for me to work on these videos. But um, this is like, you know, reality, like... This is something that a lot of people don't talk about. So as a videographer, as your company grows, you know, as your business grows to whereby more people, more and more people refer you, sometimes you get like, you know, four or five weddings in one week and you take them, not in one week, in one month and you take them and um, you get backed up, you know, because I don't know how you edit videos. I know you're not going to edit a wedding video in one day. So, you know, you you get backed up. So <clears throat> that's what kind of made me want to make this video of like, maybe you should just do the videos and have somebody else edit them for you. Or if maybe you don't have a lot of weddings and maybe you just want to edit other people's wedding videos. So this is a video that might kind of like give you the harsh truth that you might not want to hear. So the pros guys so number one um the pros of like filming your own filming and editing your when your own wedding the pros number one is you get to know the couple's personality so that's something you can't do if you know you don't meet the couple and you don't shoot their wedding if you shoot their wedding um that's a pro because you get to know their personality so it's easier to choose what kind of songs um the couple will want you know and it's easier to choose, like, based on their personality. And it's easier to kind of, like, see what kind of an editing style that they would like, you know. Just based off you, like, you know, communicating with them on the day of the wedding. And uh, through all the small talk and, you know, all the questions, all the little questions you ask here and there. And their friends as well. And just vibing with them. You kind of get to understand the couple a little bit more than somebody who didn't even meet the couple. And wants to edit your wedding video. You know what I mean? So that's a pro on like if you do your own wedding films and you edit them. Because you are already, you know, you already know the couple's personality. And you kind of know what they would like if they don't tell you all this stuff. And they just say, oh, just do your thing, you know, here, blah, blah, blah. Just you, you the professional, just do your thing. So that's when you can do your thing, you know. Because at least you kind of know their uh, personality. So that's the pro, guys. So um, getting to know the couple, that's the pro. Because um, you get to know the personality. So number two is, um, you know, the pro of filming your own, uh, the, the wedding and editing it is the editing process is less time consuming. So what do I mean by this? Like when you film the wedding, you kind of like know what kind of shots you already have in the batch of the different SD cards that you have. You know, like, okay, for B-roll, at this time of the of the day, I was doing this for this B-roll shots, and I was, this, I was doing this here, I was doing that there, and the reason I was taking these shots is because so I can connect them with those shots, and you have an idea of, you know, what you wanted to get when you were shooting the B-roll, you know, or just when you were shooting the overall wedding, you had an idea. So the editing process is a little bit less time consuming for you because you already have an idea of what you're going to do with the footage. But somebody who didn't film that wedding, you know, it's going to be hard for them to edit. They're going to have to probably watch through all the whole video clips, which is like, just like re, they're going to what, re-attend the wedding, you know. So if you, 
if you film the wedding, you're going to have, you're going to cut the editing time and um, the creative time in half because you already know what kind of shots you're trying to get. And um, yeah, so somebody who did shoot the wedding, they're going to, they're going to take longer trying to edit the footage. When you shoot the video, you already know what to do in the editing process, in the post-production. But some, and you already, and you also have a vision already, you know what I'm saying? But somebody who didn't shoot the wedding, it's like they're, they're trying to put together, um, like a, like a jigsaw puzzle. They're trying to put together a puzzle that they have no picture of what the end result is. Like, okay, this is a picture of a lion in the forest, you know, or this is a picture of the London Bridge, you know. But if you just get the scattered puzzles, you're not going to know, you know, where a tree is or what con what's near the, the, this this object and that and where, like, you know, you're not going to know where to start. But if you already have a picture in your mind of where you want to go, it's going to be easy for you to put those puzzles together than somebody who just doesn't even have the picture, you know. So when you shoot the wedding, you have a picture when you're shooting it. Okay, I want to make it like this, so I want to go like that. So sometimes that's my problem too when I'm editing um, videos that I shoot with somebody else. Like I have a second shooter like Melissa. And sometimes she goes out and she like, you know, does her own shots. And then in the editing process, I'm like, damn, what the hell was she doing here, man? Fucking Melissa. Like what the, wh like what the hell is this? You know, like, oh, sh like what is this? Does this make sense? And then I watch the next clip. Does this make sense? And then like, watch through the clips so i have to watch through the clips but if i shot this thing i already know which shots i nailed and stuff like that you know i already know what i did so i'm not going to spend too much time so you know because i already have the picture in mind but um i have to just like i'm saying i have to like go through all her footage to kind of be like okay this makes sense here this doesn't i can connect this with this okay she was trying to do this in this shot okay she was trying to do this here you know what i'm saying so that's why it's so um it's time consuming when you're trying to go through somebody else's footage to edit their wedding. Okay, so number three, okay, pro number three is um you can add signature shots. You can add your signature shots to the wedding, you know. So a signature shot is a shot that only you do, you know, every I advise that every wedding uh, videographer should have their own signature shots because that's what mainly separates you from the rest of all these idiots trying to call themselves wedding filmmakers. Like, you know, they don't even have a signature shot. Like, you can't even tell if, you know, if this is them or they're just replicating somebody else's shit. So have your own signature shots, you know, I, I like, I have a set of my own shots that I always do at every wedding, or at least 95% of the weddings I do. So it's good to shoot your own wedding because you kind of add a little bit, you add, you add your style to it. You know, you add um, your own signature style to it, you know, because like filmmaking is like, you know, it's like cooking. Your mom can teach you how to cook and uh, you guys will cook the same dishes but they're going to taste slightly different because of the process of how you guys cook those dishes. Because just like adding just a little bit more salt than she did will make yours taste a little bit different. Just like maybe having uh, yours on, a, on, on more of a heat than hers, maybe she has hers on three the whole time and you had yours on seven, you know, it's gonna be two different dishes. So different spices and at different times that you put those spices in the food and um, how you prep it, how long you maybe it's been in the fridge. Like, you know, you might cook the same dish, but it's always slightly going to taste different because she added her touch to it and you added your touch to it. So when you shoot a wedding, you add your touch to it. So you have your own style and your own feel. So um, that's a good thing about filming and editing your wedding because you already, you know, you add your touch to it. You add your signature shots. But if somebody else shoots the same wedding, they'll add their own touch to it. And you might not be feeling their style of filming anyways. You might be like, this idiot thinks is, you know, he thinks it's Quentin Tarantino, man. Look at this shot. What the hell is this, you know? So, you know, you add your own signature shots. And that's the pro of editing and filming your own video. So, number four is um, you control your turnaround time. 
So um, this is going to be a quick one. So like, you know, when you film your own wedding, uh, you when you film... You, when you film and edit a wedding, you like you control everything. Like you control, you can tell the couple like, as, but if you run your own business, you can tell the couple like, um, okay, so um, uh, this is gonna take me, you know, two months to complete, or it's gonna take me a month, it's gonna take me a week. Which is, um, it's stupid to tell people you're gonna take a week. I mean, if you're just starting out, yeah, you can take a week because you don't have other weddings and you don't have other things you're doing, but. When you become busy, like when you become a working, uh, you know, full time wedding filmmaker, you, you, you're you not going to be telling people, I'll get your shit done in a week. Trust me. Well, you, I'll just let you, you know, I'll just let you go through the process if um, you don't believe me. I'll just let you go through the process. Because when I first started doing weddings, I was telling people, I'll do their wedding in a week because I didn't have nothing to do. So I was doing their wedding in a week sometimes. Or even two weeks the most. Actually, I think two weeks. But now I tell people eight weeks. I tell people, you know, three months because I have other weddings still in the batch, still getting processed. And I hate being rushed, you know. Like, you can't rush creativity. You can't rush talent. You know, you got to, like, you know, change songs and music design and, and color grading. You can't rush those things. Once you start rushing those things, you know, it just, it doesn't look right on your part. And just know that, you know, when you send the film out there, it's representing you and your company. And every film you send out there has the potential of either getting you more bookings or not getting you more bookings. So number five is um, creative freedom. So when you're filming and editing your own um, wedding, you have creative freedom. So, you know, um, people that um, send me emails saying, oh, I'll edit your video and I'll send you a few samples, see if you like them before you pay. So which means, like, they're going to send me their own style of my a wedding that I shot. So they honestly don't have the creative freedom because I can just say, oh, take this out and put this out or do this and do that. But, you know, so you don't, you don't want to edit somebody else's wedding because just for that reason, you're not going to have creative freedom. But when you edit your own, vi- uh, your own wedding film and... When you film it and edit it, you're going to have creative freedom where you can, you know, edit the style that you're editing. <clears throat> you can do what you want with the video and stuff like that. You can express your talents fully. You can express your creativity. When you're editing, you can even express your editing skills. But so you have creative freedom. So that's a pro right there. You have creative freedom when you're filming um, your own wedding. But when you're filming somebody else's, you don't have any creative freedom. So let's go to the cons, guys. So number one is uh, you put up your own money. So what do I mean? Um, when you are just like a one-man band, you know, you have to buy all the gear. You have to come out of pocket for everything. So you have to put up your own money. You know, like don't expect somebody else to give you money. I mean, you can get money from the bank, but you're still gonna pay the you you're still gonna pay them back plus interest. You know, depending on how you do it credit cards, all that, you're still going to have to pay them back. So, um, yeah, so you put up your own money. So that's a con, you know, unless you want to rent gear, but you still have to put money up to rent that gear. So that's a con right there of doing your own, you know, stuff is you get to um, put up your own money. Number two is um, enormous workload. So the workload is enormous when you film and edit your own wedding. You know, like um, you do way more work than if you're doing it for somebody else. Because um, you have to, like, educate yourself on how to film. You have to invest putting money into the equipment. You have to market your your services. You have to be a good salesperson as well. You have to, you know, go know how to book weddings. You have to start filming now. You have to edit the stuff. You have to pack and ship the stuff. You have to be the customer service of your business. You know, you have to deal with legal issues and all that stuff. So... The workload is just way more like people think it's just like, oh, I'm following my passion. I'm filming. But there's a lot that comes with just running your own business, you know, because running your own business is kind of like if if you're when you're an entrepreneur, it's kind of like you eat what you kill kind of thing, you know, like wild animals. When, When they go out there like a lion, a lion has to kill every day. You know, these animals like the you know, they have to kill every day for them to eat. You know, because they don't have a, they don't put stuff in the fridge. They don't kill like, oh, let me kill two hyenas today so I can, 
uh, two hyenas, really. Who wants to fucking kill a hyena? Let me kill two antelopes today, you know? Or let me kill two uh, wildebeest today so I can eat one today and one tomorrow. No, what they do is they kill one. They kill when they want to eat, When kill when they have to eat. So, you know, you kill what you eat, you know, and if you don't kill, you don't eat. So that's the mentality with uh, being an entrepreneur and being your own, um, you know, employee is you have to go hard for yourself. You have to get these bookings. If you don't book a wedding, you don't get paid that month. You know, you have to wait for the next wedding. So you go hard, you know, so it's a lot of work that goes into all that. You know, it's not like it's not all like, you know, it's not all sunshine and rainbows when you're doing your own business. You have to be you have to be marketing yourself, promoting yourself. So it's a whole lot of work that comes with um, this business, especially a wedding, because a wedding is not a business whereby you have repeat clients. No, you don't have any repeat clients unless they divorce and come back to you. But it's, a uh, you know, a one off thing. So. That's why the, it's hard to sustain the business, but you know, it's, it's, um, it's a lot of work, you know. It's good to like, okay, I'm filming everything. I know I'm going to edit this and edit that, but you know, it's a lot of work. It's a lot of work that you have to put in, you know. It's like, it's like, um, you doing work, one person doing work for five people, you know, it's just crazy. You know, other people have teams for these where they have a team that just deals in marketing this stuff. They have a team just edits this stuff. They have a team just, just films this. But if you just one person, you're going to be doing all that stuff by yourself, you know, and plus Uncle Sam needs to get paid this way. So it's, it's a whole lot of stuff that you have to, you know, do a lot of work that you have to do when you're by yourself. I'm not trying to scare you off. I'm just telling you the truth, you know, because they didn't tell me this when I was starting, you know, I was just like, you know, I was like, oh yeah, weddings. I didn't, I, I didn't know all this. I, I, I learned as I moved on. So you guys um, who are just maybe starting out, is this is a good video for you. So you can kind of like start thinking about those things because for real, those things do are going to start happening. That's that. So let's go to the next con, guys, which is um, your passion turns into work. You know what I mean? So due, due to point number two, which is I just say the enormous workload. So due to point number two, your passion turns into work. You see, it stops being a passion. When you start getting a lot of weddings, you go from it being a passion to it feeling like a lot of work. Like, oh man, I got fucking five videos. I got to edit. Fuck, man. Shit. I got five videos. I got to edit. And I can't even take my son to the park, man. I Fuck, man. You know, I can't even work with something else. I, I can't even watch an ad from Ty Lopez. Something happened that changed my life. I bumped into knowledge and another knowledge. A few more knowledge. When you work for somebody else, you just show up and get the hours and you leave. But, um, <laughs> but it's, you know, it's, I'm not trying to discourage you guys. It's just, it's reality. You know, when you start out, you think it's all good. But later on, if you don't manage your time properly, you know, you get backed up and it really starts feeling like work, you know, and then you stop booking weddings because you have too much work and then you stop getting weddings and it, it's just, it's crazy, guys. I've been through a lot of ups and downs in the business, you know. You stop putting your all into these videos because you just want to like knock them out, knock them out, knock them out. And that's what I mean by your passion turns into work because you just want to like freaking work and get the fuck out, you know, like you, you want to just clock out like soon as you clock in, man, the fuck am I clocking out type thing so your passion turns into work when you get slammed and you just want to knock videos out and get to the next one without even putting the love into these videos and one thing you always have to remember is every video you put out there represents you so every video you put out there is working for you and has the potential other people see it and be like I want this guy to shoot my wedding <laughs> so you gotta if you stop putting that love that you used to put when you first started doing it you know, you're not going to get that many weddings, you know, guys. So that's that. So let's go to the last um, con. And the last con is you handle all the legal issues. <clears throat> so the con of filming and editing your own wedding is like you handle all the legal issues. And I'm not going to go too much into this. But, yeah, so if, you feel, if you're a filming company, you know, you will have to handle, like, issues that might arise, um, you know, for the fact that you're doing business, you know what I'm saying? Some people might want to sue you because they think, oh, you got your own business, man. You, you, you make it money, make it rain on my ass, you know, type shit. 
you also have to account for like you know the taxes you you have to account for uh, licenses and insurance and uh, registration or oh, are you a registered business oh is your business licensed and insured blah 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 some people be asking that and the venues and stuff like that so you all you have to um do these things and i pay monthly for my insurance and all that so you just have to <laughs> When you're running your own wedding, you have all these things that you have to deal with. So, yeah, so that's um, that's my uh, video, guys. So that's the end of the video. And I hope you guys learned something from this video. But then again, in conclusion, I would always rather film and edit the video by myself than have somebody else edit the video for me. That's that, guys. And um, thank you for watching. And guys, make sure you smash the like button because these are good tips that I'm giving you guys. So make sure you smash the like button so that I know that you guys, you know, you're watching and appreciating the videos. Smash that subscribe button, guys. I'll see you guys in the next one. I gotta go pick up my son now. I'm 30 minutes late.